CCO Virtual Community Lead Poison Prevention Program, presented by CCO Concerned Citizens Organized Against Lead. Who we are. CCO Concerned Citizens Organized Against Lead is the first lead poison grassroots community based organization in the city of Cleveland established in 2005. Our mission statement is to educate, empower, and collaborate to eliminate childhood lead poisoning within our families and communities. Objectives, this workshop will help you prevent childhood lead poisoning, know what to do if your child becomes poisoned, help you stop further exposure to lead hazards if your child has lead poisoning. However, our hope is that using the information that we give you, you can prevent your child from becoming poisoned. Miss Lead webinar series part one, what is lead? We would like to welcome everyone this evening for joining us for the series funded by St. Luke's Foundation. Before we get into full swing, I would like to give thanks to God for allowing Seco to be in existence for 20 years, as well as able to put this virtual webinar series on. We also would like to thank him for the wonderful supporters like you. I would like to briefly recognize some very wonderful supporters that is helping make this series a reality. Shahara Kelly, our virtual producer. Diana King, an 18 year CCO member who will be presenting with me tonight. Undivided Cleveland Tanisqua, our millennial partners. We have to fill that generational gap. For David and Marva Patterson and for Tricia Nymphway. Good evening, my name is Diana, and as Robin mentioned, I will be presenting with her tonight. I am the parent of two lead contaminated children who will be entering into adulthood in a few years. I would like to start off announcing a few housekeeping rules for the meeting. Please mute all mics. Questions will be answered at the end of the presentation, or you can enter into the chat. There is a lot to learn about the silic epidemic that is three times as bad as Flint, Michigan. CCOL is here to help give the information that can help us help ourselves and our children. So we asked you to hold on, take notes during this series. We promise you it will be time well spent. What is lead? Lead has an atomic number of 82 on the metal periodic chart. Lead is highly resistant to corrosion and lead in the environment such as soil was really contaminated from emissions of vehicles when lead gasoline was used and banned in 1987. We have, most of us may not have seen this since we were in school in science class. Lead is the highly, highly resistant to corrosion and lead in the environment such as the soil was really contaminated from the emissions of, uh, of vehicles with lead gasoline and was used and banned in 1987. Global history, in 250 BC, Nicander of Selphon reported on the colic and anemia resulting from lead poisoning. Lead's toxicity was recognized and recorded as early as 2000 BC. The first epidemic associated with lead intoxication was reported by Paul of Aegea in the seventh century AD. Lead poisoning affects mostly at that time painters, metal smith, smithers, and miners. Ice layers in, the green, in Greenland show the environmental pollution by lead during this period is very important. Lead was in high demand and a byproduct of refining gold, silver and gold ore. Thousands of slaves were regarded, were, were needed to operate the mines. There was a sweet aromatic syrup called Sapa, which contained one gram of 
lead per deciliter. It was also used in co uh, cooking of food and between the cooking of the food and the intaking of the wine, they, uh, the Romans received 35 micrograms per day to up to 250 micrograms per day of lead. The history of lead in Cleveland, Ohio, past to present. 1962, Cuyahoga County Coroner Dr. Samuel Gerber started investigating lead deaths in local children with researchers from Case Western Reserve School of Medicine. At least 19 children died between 1953 and 1959. In Cleveland, the doctors and public health officials have been working on lead poisoning for some form, whether haphazard or routine. Since County Coroner Samuel Gerber first noticed dozens of children convulsing and dying of lead exposures in the 1950s. 1970, Cleveland Mayor Carl B. Stoltz testified before the U.S. Senate Committee on Labor and Public Welfare about the impacts of lead poisoning in Cleveland. He tells the committee it costs about 300 to an abeta home of lead and approaches 275,000 for a lifetime care of a brain damaged child. In 1971, the Cleveland Health and Welfare Department receives a $700,000 federal grant to start a comprehensive lead poisoning prevention and control program. In 1972, using federal grants for screening, the city defines its lead belts with the highest rates of lead poisoning in the Huff Norwood neighborhood and in the near west side Tremont neighborhood. At the time, Dr. Jack Wilt, the chief of the city's environmental unit, oversaw testing of 10,000 children. January 12, 1973, Mayor Wal Ralph Perk launches a five-year citywide program to screen children for lead poisoning. November 12, 1973, the Environmental Protection Agency releases a study that confirmed lead from automobile exhaust is posing a direct threat to public health. In, 19, in November 28th of 1978, the federal government starts a phase out of the leaded gasoline. The federal ban on lead-based paint for residential use begins in 1978. In 1988, the Lead Contamination Control Act of 1988 authorized the Center for Disease Control and Prevention to create programs to eliminate childhood lead poisoning. August of 1990, President George Bush announces, first dog Millie, an English Springer Spaniel was poisoned by lead. During renovations to the White House, Bush caused her illness a terrible thing. In 1991, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention recommended universal screening for blood levels, lead levels, and lowers the level of concern from children from 25 micrograms per deciliter to 10 micrograms per deciliter. In 1992, Mayor Mike White responds to criticism about the city's lack response to health department reports that reveal 86% of young children tested in the Glenville neighborhood had high lead levels. He calls for more federal resources. Congress passes the Residential Lead-Based Hazard Reduction Act, Title 10, to help protect young children and families from exposure from paint, lead paint, and dust. In 1997, the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, 
full phase out of lead gasoline is complete. 1998, the CDC surveys 19 states to determine the level of childhood lead poisoning. Ohio has the second largest percentage of children who test positive. Cauga County has the highest percentage among all counties served. HUD rejects Cleveland's proposal for a $3 million lead hazard reduction grant due to a poor record of using the money to abate homes under the under a $5.5 million grant awarded Cleveland in 1995. The city had contracted to reduce lead hazards in 600 dwelling units, but as of March 1998, a small snapshot of the city's progress showed only 11 of the 600 dwelling units had been completed. In 2003, a plain dealer series titled Children Left Behind finds that Cleveland has the second highest rate of lead poisoning of 10 cities with comparable demographics. In 2005, Concerned Citizens Organized Against Lead was formed. In 2007, Mayor Jane Campbell kicks off a Lead Awareness Week press conference celebrating the progress made. She says the number of lead poisoned kids had declined from 47% from 1994 to 2004. In, 19, in 2010, the 70-member Greater Cleveland Child Lead Advisory Council asked more than 1,200 doctors and clinics throughout Cuyahoga County to track children whose lead levels are within the legal limit but are still considered dangerous by some clinicians. County officials who push for the added intervention hope it can increase screenings, particularly in the suburbs where little testing is done and possibly spark a movement to change national childhood lead poisoning guidelines. Screening rates don't change, but the lower level of concern is later adopted. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, HUD, and the Environmental Protection Agency support a national goal of eliminating childhood lead poisoning by 2010. January 2012, the CDC Center of Disease Control Advisory Committee on Dealing on Childhood Lead Poisoning Prevention says dealing with the housing of children only after they have an elevated blood level should no longer be acceptable practices. In 2012, Cleveland is stripped of the remainder of two million federal dollars that was granted for cleaning hazards of lead paint and dust from homes because officials failed to spend the federal money in a timely manner. HUD also demanded that the city transfer management of the program from the Department of Public Health to the Community Development Department in order to spend the remainder million. The CDC lowers the level of concern for lead in children's blood levels from 10 to 5 micrograms per deciliter. HUD rejects Cleveland's application in September of 15 for a $3 million grant to reduce or remove lead paint and dust from more than 200 homes. 2018, HUD awards both Cauga County and Cleveland with lead grants for more than $3 million. In 2020, the Lead Resource Center is now open and the home and loan grants for landlords to help repair rental property is now in existence. Lead in the environment. Lead is a heavy metal, a natural element mined from the earth our word plumbing is from the ancient use of lead to make pipes. Lead does not leave the environment naturally, 
It cannot be diluted or dissolved, and it's not biodegradable. Lead is found in dust and soil. It is an urgent hazard if paint is chipping and peeling. Lead poisoning in Greater Cleveland. All of Cleveland, East Cleveland, Lakewood are high risk areas. In Cargill County in 2006, 700 children younger than six years old was diagnosed with lead poisoning, lead levels 10 micrograms per deciliter and above. But 4,070 children had lead levels high enough to possibly cause permanent damage at five micrograms per deciliter and above. 24% of East Cleveland's children, 22% of Cleveland's, and 10% of Lakewood children have elevated lead levels. As you see, all zip codes in Cauga County is high risk. The city of Cleveland has more, had more children poisoned than any other area in Ohio in 2012. Cleveland is in the top five for the highest rates of lead poisoning in the country. Glenville at 38.5%, St. Clair Superior at 38.4%, Fairfax at 38%, uh, Forest Hills 36.7%, Woodland Hills at 32.8%, and East Cleveland at 31.6%. Recent evidence shows that there is no safe level of lead in the body. Cuyahoga County Board of Health Cleveland and Shaker Heights Health Departments are now bringing lead awareness to parents at five micrograms per deciliter. Testing rates are low, so the actual number of lead poisoned kids is possibly higher. Only about 22% of the children in Cleveland are tested, so most children hurt by lead are never identified. We would like to thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you got some good information for yourself and to share with others. We look forward to seeing you at our next webinar, December 19, 2020. Please feel free to contact us by phone, 216-220-6925, or you can email us at projectinfo216 at gmail.com and subscribe on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And remember, we will be posting previous webinars on these platforms. One more request. If you felt this webinar was informative, please share on the above social media platforms. In the future, we plan on posting more videos and contents on this very important subject matter.